Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope you guys got to get outside some, spend time with your loved ones, or even just spend time with yourself. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a case or a situation that just recently happened in Holiday, Florida. This was such a random and unexpected situation and I felt like the story is definitely worth talking about and telling. But before I get into it, I just wanted to ask you guys, like how many of y'all use food delivery services, whether it be like an Instacart type of thing or a Walmart delivery food service or an Uber Eats or a DoorDash or any of those things. I know that I do. Ever since COVID hit and I found out I could get my, del my groceries delivered to my front door and I didn't have to go walk around through Walmart, hello, it has been so helpful. And I know for me personally, I always use the leave it at my door, no contact method. I just feel like it's like less awkward and it makes it easier on them. They can just drop the groceries off or the food off or whatever it is right there at my door. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about 59 year old Randall Cook. Now 59 year old Randall Cook moved with his wife whom he met in 2012 down to Holiday, Florida to enjoy his retirement. He posted a bunch of videos on his Facebook where it was like him and his wife and they're like sitting out on the beach, you know, with the sun going down. Pretty much the, the image that a lot of people get when they think about retirement. A lot of Florida is a retirement community. People come here to retire and it seemed like he was just living this life. And while he was enjoying his retirement with his wife, whom he was head over heels in love with, sitting at the beach, watching the sun go down, he was also doing freelance work. There was even a post on his Facebook that said, my name is Randall Cook. I'm looking for a career with a company or freelance position that flourishes on creativity. I'm tenacious in my efforts and dedicated to the task to provide the best possible solution to convey the correct message. I believe I would be a great asset with your company or freelance projects. I'm easy to work with, creative, and love a good challenge. Randall was described as a dedicated husband, a fun loving dad, and just a really, really, really nice guy. Randall had three children of his own and two stepchildren that he considered his as well. So between him and his wife, Kathy, they had five children. Recently, Randall began making trips or driving for Uber Eats in hopes to make some extra cash. He wanted to move him and his family even closer to the beach and basically just have more money. And at this point in Randall's life, he really had basically it all in what he wanted. He had the love of his life, his wife, Kathy. He was living down here by the beach where he wanted to live to kind of settle down and retire and work these different side jobs. He was now driving for Uber Eats where he could just make extra cash in his spare time. He could start working when he wanted and quit when he wanted. He had his family near him and he was living the good life. However, on April 19th of this year, 2023, everything would change and Randall's wife and his family's lives would be shaken to their core. Just like a typical day or evening that Randall was gonna drive for his food delivery company, he dropped his wife off at home and he began to go and pick up meals and bring them to the homes that they were ordered from. Randall and his wife, Kathy, were doing like they typically do and they were texting each other basically the whole time that he was working. Like when he would stop somewhere, he would check in and she would check in with him and they would just be communicating throughout him doing his deliveries. But on this 
this evening of April 19th at 6.45 p.m., Randall told his wife that he was dropping off his last order and that he would be home soon. The home that Randall was taking this last order to was just around the corner from his house, so he should have been home soon. However, when 7.13 rolled around almost 30 minutes later and he hadn't showed up at the house, his wife began to get worried. She sent a follow-up message, but Randall did not respond, and this is definitely not like him. Randall's wife began to reach out to people because she knew that this was not like Randall. He would not just ignore her text messages or not respond. He wouldn't just run off somewhere. And so she started to reach out. She allegedly reached out to the Uber Eats delivery company. And before you know it, she reported him missing. Randall's stepdaughter even made a post about it the following day on Facebook that read, please help us find my stepdad. This is Randall Cook and also a pic of what him and my mom's car looked like Uber Eats last place he did an Uber Eats order and shortly after both his phones were turned off and no one has heard or seen him. Please help my mom find him. And not long after Randall's stepdaughter made that post, the Pasco Sheriff's Office made a post on their Facebook that was asking if anybody had seen Randall and was basically describing him saying that he was a missing 59 year old. He was 5'10", around 180 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes and where he was last seen. The detectives even reached out to Uber Eats trying to find out what his last GPS coordinates were and they were just doing their due diligence to find Randall. This is when the detectives learned that a home on Mog Road in Holiday was Randall's last delivery stop. And again, this was only four miles from his home. On April 20th, detectives went out to the house and knocked on the door. When no one answered, they walked around the house looking for clues. They saw a ring doorbell on this house and they were really hoping to see the footage on it and so they came back the next day. When they came back the next day they knocked on the door and the police began to question the man. He said that he wasn't there that night. He was off with some family. However, his roommate should have been there. His roommate's name is Oscar Solis. The detectives asked if they could see the ring doorbell footage. On uh, April 21st we actually go back to the house at 3438 Moog Road. At that time, we were able to make contact with the roommate of the suspect. Uh, the roommate was able to provide us video, and you can actually see the victim walking up to the house to deliver food, um, but the video cuts off at that point. Um, on, you can also see that, you know, that was around 645 when the video cuts off, or 655, right there when he was walking up to that house. Um, you actually see on the video that the following day, so that was the 19th when he delivered the food, you actually see on the following day on the 20th, uh, the suspect, Oscar Salas, um, was carrying trash bags with another individual and you can see them carrying these trash bags um, around the side of the house. Um, so our detectives did the right thing. They asked for permission to go through the trash bags, to go in the trash bags. Uh, there were several of them. And um, unfortunately, what we found inside of some of those trash bags was human remains. When they went and looked in the trash bags, this is when they found Randall completely dismembered and disposed of in these trash bags. The cops shocked, traumatized. They had been looking in the water behind this house because again, this is Florida. There's all these like little canals behind these people's homes and stuff. And they were thinking maybe he had ac accidentally drove off into the water somewhere or something had happened. Or they thought maybe that they would see when he was done delivering the food, which direction that he went into. They did not expect to find his dismembered body in garbage bags in the back of the house. The cops immediately set up a crime scene parameter and took Oscar into custody for failing to register as a felon in Pasco County in a violation of parole. This guy, Oscar, had just gotten out of prison this year, January of 2023. He was in there for four years for all kinds of like violent stuff and uh, robberies, and he was very well known in a, gang, in a gang up there in Indiana. It is also alleged that while he was in prison, he stabbed another inmate. So he gets out in January and his father was a local to this area. I would have to assume, this is just me guessing you guys, I'm assuming that the father because the investigators, the detectives, when they did the press conference, they said they felt really bad for the father. The father was trying to help his son. 
The father probably knows, okay, my son's getting out of prison in Indiana. Want to get him away from the gangs. Want to get him away from the old people, places, and things. You guys know the drill, right? I'll move him down here to Florida with me. He thinks he's helping his son. And as a matter of fact, on this day of April 19th, he got his father, Oscar did, to have Uber Eats deliver him food to the house. So the dad is not only trying to help him in every way, his son, 30-year-old Oscar that just got out of prison a few months prior, that's on parole in Florida now, but hadn't transferred all of his information to Pasco County and registered yet, he orders him food to have it delivered. But now it is assumed that when Randall came to, live, to deliver the food, he turned the security camera footage off, opened the door, and snatched him in the house. A senseless act of demonic is exactly what the press conference investigator or the head of chief of police called this. This was absolutely a horrific crime of passion. Uh, this person, you know, you always say the word evil, but this is demonic. Um, this individual is, what he did was demonic. But at the same time, we couldn't answer the question why. What the relationship? There doesn't appear to be any relationship. All it appears is that there was a gentleman who was working, was doing his last delivery of the night, and this person killed him for no reason. And he took him away from his family. The cops continued to investigate. They ended up finding Randall's car about a three quarters of a mile down the road that had been abandoned. They found evidence of his DNA and blood in the house. And also his wedding ring was found in the house. And then when they checked the security camera footage even further, and they went prior to when Randall came to the house to deliver the food, this is when they found these pictures here of what looks like kids or teenagers maybe leaving the home. Now these kids left the home an hour before Randall showed up to deliver that food. At first, the Pasco County Sheriff's Office was looking for these kids. They said, look, they're not in trouble, but we want to question them. It has since been released that they did question them. Now, when the cops went to the homeowner and asked him, which he has been totally cleared, he was not there, he had no idea what had went on that night. The homeowner said, I don't know who those kids are, but there's always kids in and out of this house, which to me is a red flag. First of all, whose houses are our kids in? These parents, whoever these children belong to or these young teenagers, they need to realize their kids were literally in the house with a convict that had just gotten out of prison for violent stuff. And listen, I'm an ex-con too, and I'll be the first to tell you guys, he was a convict, okay, that just got out of prison for violent stuff, and an hour later, not only murders somebody, but dismembers them. You know what kind of mental thing you gotta go through to literally dismember somebody? And cut them up and put them in trash bags? And your children were in that house doing what? Playing video games? Smoking some green? Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. So anyways, they originally arrested Oscar for the violation of not registering as a felon. That was just a way to hold him. But since then, he has been charged. Now, Oscar's not speaking at all. He is not talking to the police at all. He's not saying a single word here. When I first heard this story, I wanted to know about that man that moved the trash bags. Like, I'm thinking, you can't tell me that whoever moved those trash bags with him, helped him, did not know. If there's one thing me and y'all that pay attention to true crime has learned is a human body is heavy. I don't care how many pieces you split it into. It is heavy. Come to find out, Oscar's father was basically doing everything for his son. He was he was providing him rides. He was doing everything. And he sent his friend over there to pick his son up to give him a ride. Well, when the, the guy got there to give him a ride, he saw these trash bags and he said, hey, you want me to help you take these out? Like he was trying to be helpful. And Oscar said, yeah, or whatever he said. And he helped him take the bags around. He had no idea either. And then I feel for the dad. Obviously, I feel for Randall's family, but also like the father who was trying to help his son it don't matter he don't ever need to be let out now Brittany Randall's stepdaughter gave a statement to the media and I mean they're just absolutely destroyed I want one, said one minute at a time not even one day but one minute there's knowing she has to come home every day to 
her husband not there. They shared so many amazing memories together, but that's the only thing we can look up is just she, he wanted her to be happy. He doesn't want her to see her like this at all. We're not talking about somebody that went out to a bar, got into a fight and something happened or whatever. We're talking about just a man trying to provide for his family, you know, just out delivering people's food, trying to make a little extra cash and rang an evil person's doorbell. Randall's other stepdaughter had gave a statement saying that he was the perfect man. He was perfect in every way. Perfect dad, always there, just no matter what. There's no way someone in the right mind did something like this. I mean, doesn't make sense. The minor details aren't adding up. I still have a voicemail on my phone from last Monday. <laughs> of just his voice and him telling me how much he loves me and how much he's there for me. He was the most perfect man. And I can hope that there's a guy out there even close to him for me, you know? In my opinion of what I think happened, and this is just me looking at the case, whatever, this is what I think. I think this man had done got out of prison. I think he's demonic and a horrible person, straight up, it's what it is. I make no apologies for it. And I think he was in that neighborhood, had then moved down here, had no friends, and probably saw the little teenagers, little teenage girls in the neighborhood, and you know how some of these people are, had these kids coming in and out of the house, whatever they were doing, playing video games, smoking green, I have no idea. And I think he needed some money. He probably was asking his dad for money, and his dad's probably said, no, what you need the money for, food, I'll order you the food. And he decided to snatch that man in to rob him. And then that's what he ended up doing with his body. And that's, that's what I think happened. Nothing else makes any sense. And I mean, more details could come out. It could come out. I've seen rumors and wording online on the socials of people that allegedly live in that neighborhood and said that more actually happened to his body. But I don't know that. The cops haven't released it. And so we don't know just yet. But... This is horrifying. There is a GoFundMe for the family. I will leave it linked down below. Cases like these are just so hard because no amount of prison time, no DP, no death penalty, none, none of that is going to bring this man back. None of that is going to fill the holes in the hearts of these, you know, loved ones. What do you guys think about this case? Have y'all heard about this? Let me know what you guys think down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for being here and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.